Nintendo Switch is one month old today. So it's time for that update video. In this last month, I've been playing the hell out of my Switch. And by playing the hell out of my Switch, what I mean is I've been playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. But the important question in all this is one month in, is the Nintendo Switch worth it? And I'm also going to talk about Zelda spoiler free. Um, I'll give you guys a little mini review of what I thought about it. Because I actually just beat it this morning. Yeah, it, it took me all month. Horizon came out on the PS4. I downloaded Ghost Recon Wildlands and Mass Effect Andromeda. All those games have just been added to my backlog of games. Now that I beat Zelda, I, I, I'm going to go back and finish those. I, I hope. Uh, Zelda was just a big, awesome distraction. But uh, first I want to talk about the actual console. A lot's happened in that month. If you guys watched my Switch unboxing video, one thing I did complain about was this controller. And I... I hate this thing. I, I don't like it. I thought I'd get used to it after a month. I got used to it to the point where it was playable, but it's just, this is not a comfortable controller design. I don't have huge hands. I, I, I feel like I have pretty regular sized hands. And this, after playing more than an hour, my hands just start feeling cramped holding this. Cause it's not, I mean, it's just like a little flat square shape with, with some handles. The buttons are all very little. The joystick is right under the B button instead of it being more uh, diagonally placed like every other joystick. It's just, it's not a good controller design. On top of that, I did complain that this left joystick was acting haunted. Uh, sometimes Link would be running on his own and doing all kinds of craziness. And Nintendo did confirm that there was a hardware issue. This left joystick connects and disconnects from the console randomly. One positive thing I do have to say is that Nintendo has amazing customer service. I called them over the phone and let them know what was happening. All I had to do was take this little left joystick, put it in the mail and send it to them. And within less than a week, I already got it back and now it works perfectly. So although I don't care for the design and I don't like to use this controller, their customer service is A+. And it works perfectly now. I don't have any of those desyncing issues anymore. I do find that the Joy-Con is way more comfortable when it's attached to the console. After playing for a while, I, I do still get that cramped hand feeling. Uh, because it's just like a flat little thing that you're holding like this. But since you have the big tablet screen in the middle, it's a bit wider, so you're not so cramped holding this thing. It's funny, because when Nintendo first announced that it was going to be this portable hybrid, I, I didn't care for the portable feature. I have a 3DS, I've had all the Nintendo handhelds, and, and I don't really use them portably very much. I play at home most of the time. Um, so that was kind of a throwaway feature to me. I found myself using it way more than I thought I would, and it works awesome. I went on a, a little trip a couple of weekends ago. I was gone for two days away from home, and I took the Switch with me, played it the whole way in the car. Uh, I played it at the hotel I was in. It was just super convenient. My fiance and I, for now, we share the TV in the living room. So when we're both off, I want to play a video game. She wants to watch TV, usually something I don't care to watch. I whip this out, and I could play, and she could use the TV. Thanks, Nintendo. You changed my mind on the portable mode. Now, having complained about this controller as much as I have, I understand there's other options on the market. They do have the Pro Controller. Well, I got that too. I only got it about a week ago. This thing was sold out everywhere. I found it at a Walmart randomly one day, and they only had one left. Picked it up for 69 bucks, which is very expensive for a game controller, but it's worth every penny. It was a night and day difference playing Zelda with this over the Joy-Con. This is extremely comfortable. The buttons are bigger, the joysticks are placed comfortably, everything about it is improved. I mean, it's like holding a PlayStation or an Xbox controller. It's familiar, it's comfortable. I will be using this controller for every game that I can. And if I'm playing a multiplayer game, my friends are using this one. But what about the game selection? Because the console can be as awesome as it is, but without great games, not a great console. I've always loved Nintendo consoles, and the main reason that you buy a Nintendo console, at least for me, is to play games that I can't play on the PlayStation, the Xbox, or Steam. Because to be honest, if a new Mass Effect or whatever comes out, I'm not going to get the Switch version. I'm going to get it on PS4 or Xbox or Steam. To me, the Nintendo console is about Nintendo games. Uh, and third-party games that aren't on other consoles also. And that's where I think the Nintendo Switch falls short, at least right now. 
I understand it's a bit early, it's only a month in. I downloaded Zelda, I beat that. I also downloaded Blaster Master Zero, which if you guys haven't heard of that game, Blaster Master is a, a classic NES game uh, that was super awesome. I, I used to love playing that game. Great soundtrack, great gameplay, just a fun all around game. Blaster Master Zero is an updated remake of that. I think this was actually available on the 3DS also, but I never played it on that. It's nice having that on a home console. So I downloaded Blaster Master Zero. I started playing it a little bit. Haven't played through it quite enough to talk more about it. I'll probably do a review on that game and compare it to the original NES. Maybe a double review again. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something you'd be interested in seeing, and I'd be happy to do it. What concerns me is that after I finish Blaster Master, there's really nothing else I'm interested in until Super Mario Odyssey comes out, which Super Mario Odyssey looks fantastic. Day one purchase for sure. I can't think of one game I want between then and now. Maybe Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I'm on the fence about that because I already have that game on the Wii U, so I, it's hard to justify buying it again. Also, Bomberman. I really want that game, but it's just hard to swallow paying $50 for a Bomberman game. I love Bomberman. I've played Bomberman since the original NES Bomberman, and $50 is just way too much. I, I'm going to wait till that goes down in price. I'm hoping next year and the following years, the Switch really gets going uh, with its games and, and pumping out games from its big franchises. We, As I've said before, we need a new Metroid, Punch-Out, F-Zero. I mean, bring all your franchises back full force. Because Nintendo, that's where your strength is. So overall, great console. Is it worth buying? Yes. However, I'll say this. If you're not interested in playing Zelda, or at the very least, if you're not interested in playing it on the Switch, and you have a Wii U, wait on this. By the fall, I'm sure we're going to have bundles with Mario Odyssey. Just all kinds of really good deals. And right now, the game library... I don't think is anywhere near as strong as it could be. There's a lot of recycled games on here now. Like I said, Blaster Master Zero, I'll look into it more. I think that was on 3DS. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong down below. Street Fighter 2 is coming out. The same version practically that was on Xbox 360 and PS3 years ago. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. I mean, Mario Kart was already on Wii U. They added some characters and some new tracks. All the other good stuff that's out for the console is already out on other consoles. Great console, not a whole lot to offer just yet, but the potential is extremely good. And, and I kind of feel that that's the consensus overall right now, uh, and I have to agree with that. And as far as Zelda is concerned, wow, that game took me forever. I, okay, I... <laughs> I, I guess it shouldn't have taken me as long as it did. The reason it took forever, I've been playing Zelda since I was a little kid on the NES having no idea where to go. All those shrines in the game, there's 120 of them. They take forever to find and to complete. I had this little rule for myself where you cannot go fight Ganon until you have the green uniform. I, I don't care about us changing clothes, all these different armors. I needed to have the original green tunic. To go fight him. And to get that, yes, you can use the Nintendo 64 Ocarina of Time Link amiibo. It, it, it's not the same. You get all the shrines and you get this, this tunic of the wild and it, it looks very inspired by the original NES game and that was awesome. So I, I had to have it. I went online and printed out this map of all the shrines and I was just crossing them out with my little pen as I got them. Oh <laughs> my god. So when I got to the end, or so I thought, nothing happened. It turns out that I missed a shrine. I must have crossed one out that I didn't get. So I had to go crazy looking through the map trying to figure out which ones I did get and which ones I was actually missing. It was a complete nightmare, but I did it. I got the green tunic, I got the master sword, and I got the Hylian shield. This is Link in proper hero attire. So with all this shit equipped, I went to go fight Ganon and I beat the game. And it was well worth it because slaying Ganon in that green uniform, that's Link. Probably my favorite thing about Breath of the Wild is that sometimes it feels like a remake of the NES Zelda game. It's such a vast, open world. You, you'll go somewhere on the map that's empty because you're just curious what's there, and you think there's nothing here but grass. It turns out there's some kind of hidden quest or some hidden treasure. The detail that Nintendo put into this world shows. I also wanted to do a timeline video. I, I did a Zelda timeline video where I explained how confusing the, the, the branching timeline is in the Legend of Zelda games and how all the games fit in what order. So I was going to do a video explaining where Breath of the Wild fits after I beat it, but I can't. 
Reason being, by the time I beat the game, I, I still don't know where the hell it fits. There's things I found in the game that support it being in, in the Wind Waker timeline, for example, but then at the same time there's things that contradict that and put it in the Twilight Princess timeline. I don't know. So you know what, I'm gonna wait until Nintendo officially puts out a statement when it takes place. The only thing they've said is that it takes place sometime after Ocarina of Time. No shit. After Ocarina of Time is when the timeline splits, so that's not an explanation. It's just saying it takes place after Ocarina of Time, but it can take place in any of these three timelines. We'll see on that. If you guys haven't seen my timeline video, I'll put the link to the playlist down below in the description. Now having said all those good things about Zelda, this is where I might get some dislikes, but that's okay. Uh, because I like being completely honest with you guys about how I feel about these things. A lot of websites have been giving it perfect scores, 10s, 9s. I, I don't necessarily agree. Don't get me wrong, I'll say this right off the bat. The game's outstanding. It, it's almost perfect. But there are things in the game that the old Zelda games, I feel, did a lot better. Two glaring things, the dungeons and the bosses. In Breath of the Wild, there's four main dungeons. They're all pretty short, and they all kind of look the same. And I was kind of surprised by this, because this is something that Zelda games are usually really good with. Once you do the first dungeon, in whatever order you decide to do it, w once you see it, you've kind of seen them all. They all look the same, there's some different puzzles and whatnot, but they don't have that individual feel to each dungeon that the old games did. If you go back to the Ocarina of Time, you can go into the Fire Temple and it looks like this old fiery place. And then if you compare it to something like the Water Temple, it's just a completely different look and feel. Different monsters, different puzzles, different everything. And that's how Zelda games have always been. Every dungeon always has its own personality. And I don't think that's something Breath of the Wild did very well. And especially when it comes to the bosses. In the Fire Temple, you fight this giant fiery red dragon that you have to use a hammer to crack its skull. In the Water Temple, you have to use a hookshot to, to fight this watery tentacle with some kind of heart in the middle. And once you use the hookshot, you can drag it towards you and attack it. Very different boss fight from the other one. And the look and feel of the monsters are very distinct from each other. There's a boss at the end of each dungeon in Breath of the Wild, but they're all just a different variation of each other with some different attacks and a slightly different look. Look, I was very surprised by this because it, it felt a little lazy. And that's not something I'm used to with Nintendo, especially with Zelda games. Every boss always is so creatively distinct from the other bosses that you fight in the game. And now, I just felt like I was fighting the same boss four times. Those are my only real complaints about Breath of the Wild. Like I said, it's an outstanding game, but I, I just can't agree with people when they say that it's a perfect 10 and that it's the best Zelda game. I don't think that it is. I still like A Link to the Past and Ocarina of Time better. It's a lot more detailed, it's way more vast than those games but I, I don't think that made the better experience overall. However, it is a must-have. Uh, I'm not going to apply a score to it because, it, I mean, if you've been following this channel, you know I never give scores for any of my reviews. I, I've never liked giving scores because that, that kind of, you can't really say anything with a number. You know, you, you'll have people that'll jump to the end of the review just to look at a number whether a game's good or bad, whereas I think that it, it's a lot better to listen to what's good about a game, what's not so good, what it could have improved. I don't think there's any such thing as eight good, six bad. I, I don't think it's a perfect ten but I'm not going to address a number to it. Overall, it's a great game. It's worth getting. If you're new to Zelda, these little things probably won't bother you like they did to me. Um, but for old school Zelda fans, I'm, I'm sure you guys understand what I'm talking about. But that's about all I have to say about the Switch. Um, I, I would love to hear your thoughts down below, as always. I always love hearing from you guys, making these videos a two-way conversation instead of me just talking to you. And make sure you join me on Friday. Friday is my one-year anniversary on YouTube. Uh, so I'll definitely be celebrating that by talking to you guys again. Remember to hit like on this video if you liked it, and follow me on social media. As always, links are in the description. Subscribe if you haven't already too. I almost forgot that. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I will see you next time.